Hi, everybody. I'm here for Chapter 5 of Undead Bets. We are going to learn about Joe. Here he goes. Joe peered through the trees. A little farther down the path, he could see a small cottage in the yard. A couple kids of were playing with some puppies. Dexter was with them, leaping around and chasing his tail. We've definitely taken the wrong path, said Matt, still looking at the map. We should have turned right back there. But Joe wasn't listening. He took a few steps closer to the yard. As he did, a twig snapped under his foot. The children looked over. There was a boy about Joe's age and a younger girl who looked about six. Are you lost? shouted the boy. He had a freckly face with reddish hair. As he spoke, the puppies started barking loudly. Quiet, he said firmly, and they settled down right away. See, barked Dexter. They do as they're told. We need to show Brian. Are you looking for the campsite? The boy asked. Before Joe could reply, Matt spoke up. No, we're not. Thanks, he turned to Joe. Come on, we need to get back now. Are they all your dogs? Joe asked. Yeah, they're still puppies. Really? Come and take a look if you want. Matt rolled his eyes. What about the treasure hunt? Joe ignored him and went into the yard. Matt would hate for him, would hate for him to spoil the pleasure, the treasure hunt. But he'd have to worry about that later. Strangely, the puppies didn't come running to him even though their bottoms were wriggling and their tails were wagging. They were adorable dogs with droopy ears and thick coats. You've got them really well trained, Joe said. The boy nodded. They're an easy breed to train. My dad works in the forest, and there's so much to distract the dogs that they have to be easy to control. Then he nodded to the pups, and they zoomed over to Joe, their short, stumpy tails wagging like crazy. Dexter began barking excitedly, take one back to Brian. Joe made a face. It wasn't as if he would just put one in his pocket. Are they spaniels? The boy nodded. Yeah, I wish we could keep them all. But dad says we need to find homes for them soon. Dexter started howling with excitement. Let's get one for Brian. Joe paused for a moment. If Mr. Hill got a new dog, a better behaved one, then all of his all of his guilt about Dexter might disappear. But Joe had no idea how to persuade Mr. Hill that he wanted another dog. My name's Tom, said the boy, and this is my sister, Rachel. Are you camping at Wolf's Leap? Yeah, we're staying until tomorrow. I'm Joe, and this is Matt. Matt smiled briefly, then glanced at his watch. Come on, Joe. We're running out of time. We've got to go, said Joe reluctantly. Thanks for letting us see the puppies. As he and Matt walked down the forest path, Joe was thinking hard. Somehow, they had to get Mr. Hill to meet the pups. But how? What's the plan, barked Dexter, chasing around Joe's feet. What are you going to do? Joe shrugged. It was impossible to talk with Matt close by. Just then, they heard Lizzie's whistle. Matt groaned. Fi someone finished the treasure hunt. And I bet I know who, muttered Joe. A few moments later, Joe's fears were realized. He nudged Matt. Look over there. Through the trees, they could see Lenny and Abby walking proudly back to camp, with Lizzie in between them. What kept you, Joe? called Lenny as she passed by. Joe made a face. If only we hadn't taken that wrong turn, Matt said with a sigh. Then we'd have beaten them easily. Yeah, sorry about that, muttered Joe, scuffing the ground with his shoe. I'm not sure how I managed to get so confused with the map. What were you thinking? Matt suddenly sounded exasperated. It was so easy to follow. Um, well, I just got distracted. Yeah, said Matt gloomily. You seem to get distracted a lot lately, and it's usually when there are animals around. If you hadn't stopped to pet those dogs, we still might have won. Joe's face reddened. Matt was right. The undead pets were taking over his life. 
Just then, Dexter crashed out of the bushes. Have you got a plan yet? Joe glared at him. No, he muttered, hoping Matt wouldn't hear. Then he mouthed, Go away! He turned back to Matt, but his friend was already stalking off back to camp, his head down, his hands stuffed into his pockets. He looked miserable. Joe sighed. He hated arguing with Matt. He raced after him. But as he reached camp, Lenny and Abby were already collecting their prizes. A pair of cool-looking head headlamps. Mm, that's cool. Well done, girls, Lizzie beamed. You weren't the first ones to find me. But you weren't the only ones who'd worked out the word puzzle. And just in case anyone is still struggling, the word was wolfhound. Matt slapped his forehead. Of course! But Joe wasn't listening. He'd heard a howl. Oh! Dexter was at it again, trying to get his attention. Joe could see him in the distance, skulking around the trees, just beyond the camp. Howling his head off, Joe sighed. Someone, somehow, he had to get Mr. Hill to see those dogs, but he had no idea how to do it. All right, that's the end of that chapter. They're finding more and more things. Crazy. All right, I will be back with you tomorrow to read chapter six. That's when it gets crazy. All right, have a good night. Bye.